Arachnophobia is the number one fear on the planet. But what exactly does that mean? Arachnophobia is literally just the fear of arachnids. But when I bring this up at programs, a lot of people default to just one type of arachnid, which is spiders. I don't run into many people scared of horseshoe crabs. Look it up ticks, or mites, well, unless you're a snake owner, then you know the fear of mites. But perhaps the most famous other group of arachnids that I don't really hear get brought up that much are scorpions, and her name is Pokey. Scorpions are one of several types of arachnids found worldwide. They're found on every continent except for Antarctica, and they range anywhere in size from 11 millimeters all the way up to 23 centimeters. And if you watched our top five giant extinct predators video, you'll remember Pulmono Scorpius, this giant prehistoric scorpion from before dinosaur times that reached something like 70 centimeters long, was basically the size of a house cat. So for Halloween, I thought it'd be a fun idea to do our first kind of non-reptile animal spotlight, because so far we've only covered snakes and lizards and tortoises. So our breakdown today for this invertebrate is going to be a little bit different. So they're in the kingdom Animalia, which honestly all of the animal spotlight animals will be because to be an animal in animal spotlight, you have to be an animal, which means kingdom Animalia. I just said animal a lot. Then they're in the phylum Arthropoda, which is a group of invertebrate animals. They don't have a backbone or any bones at all, actually. And they have segmented bodies and paired jointed appendages. Then they're in the class Arachnida because they are arachnids. And this group of animals, typically they have eight legs when they're an adult. And then they also have these things called chelicerae, which are kind of like mouth appendages, which help with feeding. Now on a tarantula, those are gonna be the kind of fangs that they can move independently but on a scorpion they're these weird like mouth claw things we're going to talk about that more in a little bit then they're in the order scorpionis which is scorpion so they have these long segmented tails that's tipped with a stinger and they also have these pedipalps, which are their pinchers. The family is Scorpionidae, which is a group of burrowing old world scorpions, and then the genus is Heterometris. And these are your giant forest scorpions. There includes this species, also just the giant forest scorpion, that's the name of it, and that's actually the world's largest scorpion species. And generally they have large, darkly colored bodies, and their venom is usually really mild. The name Asian forest scorpion is actually commonly used for a few different species in captivity, like this one, like the Asian black scorpion, because they all, when they're taken out of the wild, a lot of them, they look so similar in color and body shape and all that stuff, so they just get kind of mixed up. And there's actually arguments for up to eight different subspecies. This species was first described right on the dot in 1800, and is one of the world's largest scorpion species. They reach anywhere from usually four to five or so inches from mouth to tail tip, and that puts it in league with several other large, more famous scorpion species like the emperor scorpion from Africa. They have a very darkly colored body and this light she actually looks almost solidly black but then if you put her on the sunlight her body will have this kind of greenish bluish tint to it and they also lack the bright red stinger or telson that the emperor scorpion has so that's one way you can kind of tell the two apart. They have eight legs, which I think just about all arachnids do. So they have four legs on each side, but they have 10 limbs total because don't forget, they have the giant pinchers or the pedipalps. And on this species, they're actually quite large and broad. They have setae lining the tail, the legs, the pinchers, the front of the face, and these are little sensory hairs that help them find food and also just move around in general. And they have these weird little feather-like appendages on the underside called pectines, and they use this to help feel around as well. And their eyes are pretty weird. So they have one set of eyes up here, this pair right here is called the median eyes. Those are really easy to see on just about any scorpion. But then down right around the mouth, they actually have another set of eyes called the lateral eyes. And even with all those eyes, their eyesight is pretty terrible. So that's why they feel around using their pinchers and then also all the sensory hairs. In the wild, their lifespan really isn't that long. They're estimated to live somewhere between one to maybe three years of age. But in captivity, they can live anywhere from seven to 10 years. The males tend to grow longer tails and larger pinchers than the females, but in most scorpion species, the females are the ones with the bigger body. It was actually very hard to find an accurate range map for the Asian forest scorpions in the wild because so many of the heterometra species all look so similar in shape and body and coloration and everything, but these ones are found from India down through Malaysia and into certain islands in Indonesia. They hang out in tropical to subtropical, fairly dense and very humid rainforests across this whole region. And obviously they're mostly hanging out on the forest floor. They hit sexual maturity somewhere between one to three years of age and females can have a gestation period 
period ranging anywhere from three and a half months all the way up to over seven months. And after that, mama will have anywhere between 20 to 40 little baby scorpions. Now, normally when I do these animal spotlight videos, I don't really have babies to show you because like when I've done like the red footed tortoise or I've done the Florida king snake, those have all been adult sized animals. And if I'm going to show you the baby, I'll just do like a quick Google search to find pictures of what a baby one looks like. Today, however, I do have baby scorpions to show you because this is actually a mama. When I bought Pokey back in March at a reptile expo, I bought her as a supposed male. But a couple months after that, it turns out she was in fact a pregnant female because one day I open up her enclosure and all of a sudden she's got a bunch of little white crawly things all over her back. And this is what they do. When a scorpion is born, its exoskeleton and stinger aren't hardened yet, so they climb on mom's back and she carries them around for a few weeks to protect them until they shed their skin for the first time, and then they climb off her back and they're on their own. They will cannibalize each other, however, because they're just hungry looking for food, so I did have to separate them. And if I left them in too long with her, she most likely would start snacking on some as well. In the wild, some of these species might hybridize as well, just because so many of the heterometrous scorpions are so similar genetically and also in shape and size, and they have such overlapping ranges, so I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen. After doing two diurnal species in our last two animal spotlights with the Florida king snake and then the green iguana, we are back to nocturnal animals. They are nighttime predators, so they use their sensory tools like the hares and the pinchers to feel around in the rainforest undergrowth and leaf litter for food. They sleep and find shelter in leaf litter, under logs, little burrows, under tree roots and things. I mean, <laughs> being a small predator kind of helps fitting into tiny nooks and crannies. Now with their venom, and and yes, it is venom. It is not poison. I'm probably going to be doing a video about that at some point in the future because I get asked it all the time at programs. Is this snake poisonous? Is this spider poisonous? And I see it in TV and movies and books and freaking even on Animal Planet and other nature shows, I'll see people calling snakes poisonous and it drives me insane. Anyways, so their venom is really mild. It's really not that strong. It doesn't really cause more of a reaction in an adult human than like a bee sting usually does as long as you're not like allergic to bees. So they don't really rely on their venom to help get food. And all the times I've fed scorpions like this over the years, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen one use its tail to kill the food. What they rely on to secure their food is actually right here with these big meaty claws. These are surprisingly strong pinchers for a rather small animal compared to us. They can easily break skin on a human and they can obviously very easily crush a cricket. So as I said before, on spiders, the chelicerae, which are the little mouth feeding appendages, which help with eating, those have evolved into fangs. So with spiders, they can rear their fangs back, they can work the fangs independently, kind of help with the food. So that's what they do. On scorpions, however, it kind of ended up a little bit differently. They've evolved into these bizarre alien-like little mini claws that rip off the tiny pieces of the prey into a small preoral cavity, which you're gonna be looking at right now, and it's absolutely bizarre. Hopefully you weren't eating when you just watched that clip. I probably should have given you a heads up. Speaking of eating, this is a very big scorpion to a lot of people. I mean, it's one of the world's largest living scorpion species. And she has a pretty good dent on the size of my hand, but this is nothing compared to the prehistoric scorpions that lived millions of years ago that were the size of cats. So there are no vertebrates on this menu, no bony creatures going in that stomach. This is 100% invertebrate hunter. So she's gonna be eating things like crickets, roaches, beetles, other arachnids, like smaller scorpions and spiders, things like that. Now, because their venom is so mild and their pinchers, like I said, will draw blood. It will give a little bit of a hurt to it, but that's not really enough to deter most predators. So there are quite a few animals out there that will eat these scorpions. You've got things like birds, lizards, mongooses are a big one, and then even larger arachnids like large tarantulas and larger scorpions. Really none of the heterometrous species are listed by the IUCN, whether they're endangered or least concern or anything, just because we don't really know much about them. And because when you're doing field research and everything, you can see one, but it could be one of eight or nine possible scorpion species. So it's, it's just very hard to gather wild data on these guys. They're most likely not in any trouble of going extinct, but unfortunately, just about all the ones of these that you're gonna see in captivity for sale are probably wild caught imports. So, I mean, that is obviously, you don't wanna buy wild caught animals if you can help it, but I mean, these guys are just imported so cheaply, they're sold for like 20 bucks, so not a whole lot of people work with them in captivity. So, that is negatively affecting their population in the wild, but we don't know if it's enough to offset how quickly and readily they do reproduce, so I, unfortunately, we just don't know enough. 
Despite not really being fans of the light, Scorpius have a pretty cool trick where they can actually glow under a black light. Thanks to a special compound in the hyaline layer of their exoskeleton, it reacts to the light from a black light and they glow this weird kind of bluish white. Like those plastic stars and moons you could find and put on your ceiling as a kid. But um, I don't think you'd want to put a bunch of these up on your ceiling. And because of this, sometimes when a scorpion dies and it's preserved as a wet specimen, it can actually make the whole liquid in the jar glow as well. This one's kind of just another general scorpion fact, but for some reason, a lot of people think there's a higher number of venomous scorpion species that are really dangerous to humans over like venomous spider species or most other venomous animals, which is just not true. Of the nearly like over 1,700 species of scorpion, somewhere around there, only about two dozen actually have a venomous sting that's considered dangerous to humans. And also scorpions molt their skin just like a tarantula, kind of like a snake does where it's all at once. So you'll have the scorpion and basically an empty shell of a scorpion next to it. And when they shed their skin, their stinger is actually a bit soft for usually about a week or so. So normally during this time, they don't really hunt much. They just kind of hide and wait for their exoskeleton to harden up. Because of this species' milder venom, fairly impressive size, and normally decent enough attitude, they are actually becoming very, very popular pets. Now they're right up in there in league with the emperor scorpion, which used to be kind of the most prevailing common pet scorpion in captivity, but because of Africa's kind of recent uh, export laws, those are becoming a lot more hard to find and much more expensive. So these guys are becoming way more easy to see in most pet stores across the country. So that was our spotlight on the Asian forest scorpion. Make sure you like the video if you learned something. Comment down below if you have a scorpion or if you'd like a pet someday of one, because honestly, this is probably the easiest animal I had to take care of. They're very good pets. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future videos, because I do animal videos just about every Thursday. Make sure you check out the link to our Patreon down in the description if you want early access to like YouTube videos and stuff and other perks like that. You can support the channel for as little as three bucks a month. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you later. Thank you.